Okay, now that we are kind of getting a command or an understanding of vowel modifications, or at least simple vowel modifications, uh, I want to walk us through some things that are really important to understand how these vowels will uh, morph and change in different vocal phrases or passages, and that they're not always exactly the same. We learned that ah goes to ah goes to uh goes to ooh, and then we learned that ah goes to ah goes to uh goes to ooh, and then we learned that e toggles between e and e like a stair step and sort of walks its way up. Uh, we didn't really talk that much about ooh, and I'm going to go into ooh in a minute, but um, ooh and o share the same vowel sound. So ooh toggles like e, ooh and then o, and then ooh and then o as it goes up and down the scale. But what I want to discuss first, before I go into all of that part of this and the recap of that, is that most of what I teach, a big foundation of what I teach, I hold to the tenets of early appoggio, early uh, bel canto uh, style of singing. Now, I, I'm going to show you a chart on the screen. I'm going to a chicken scratch one out here to sort of show you this. But you know, we have our vowel sounds, and look on the screen, and I'll show you. But it's a, e, i, o, and u. Now that's for the English language, but in Italian, it's not pronounced that way. In Italian, it's a, e, e, o. Ooh. Okay, so it a e e o u. Now let's sing those. O n e o u. Right, and those are the only vowels that we get right there in the Italian language or in bel canto or appoggio. Now, I like that a lot because. The vocal tract, there's something called vocal tract shaping, and there's lots of technical terms for a lot of different things, but, and I want to keep this simple without bogging you down with a bunch of technical information. But within the vocal tract itself, we want the least amount of shifting, the least amount of jaw movement, the least amount of tongue displacement. We want the tongue away from the back of the throat, as we've discussed. That's why we start with a dropped tongue, then a concave tongue, and eventually the tongue will protrude out of the mouth and away from the back of the throat. But we need the relaxation response between each three to get us through those stages to under, fully understand true, good, safe, open throat technique. But here we have a, e, e, o, u, right? Well, there's a problem with that because that's great for Italian. If you're only singing in Italian and you're doing an aria or something, that's awesome, good for you. But that poses a problem for the English language and here's why. We have a, e, e, o, u for Italian, which is great for arias and to sing in Italian. But it's not so good if you're singing modern music or something in English, which, by the way, um, this is true unilaterally for languages across the board. So this will really help if you speak a different language or you're going you know, to speak Spanish or Norwegian or Swedish or German or whatever it is. There's a lot of closed down vowel sounds. And you can walk through the process of this, and it's really cool to understand how to create this Japanese, whatever it is. Now, in Apoggio, or in Bel Canto, there's no provision for E, like LE. There's no provision for E, like LID. There's no provision for I, like LIKE. There's no, most importantly in our language for the songs that we sing, there's no provision for A, uh, like love. There's no provision for a, ah, like last. So if you're singing a poggio, you sing a, e, e, o, u. Right? In the English language, if you were to say a, e, i, o, u, we'd sing a, i, o, u. Right? Now, even in the English language, there are some of these here that don't count or there's no provision for. But we have learned that if we have two dots over the O in the English language, it's not O, it's U. And you know, many different things like that grammatically that we, we say things. Now the problem that we're faced with is that if you want to sing lady, we want to sing A, but we can't because in Apagio, and I've been teaching you guys this to go ah, you know, again, it's the law, ah, 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 like loft, and then o, oh, ooh. Now, I put a substitution in there, which was uh, like hook, if you remember. There is no uh, like hook. 
right? And I should have put this on here. Um, in fact, I'll do it now. So there's no uh like hook. Um, here's another problem with that. We need to sing at least five different vowel sounds that sit outside the vowel sounds that you're currently doing in the program. How do we reconcile that and what do we do? When we build the ah uh vowel, we can shift it a little bit to modify to these other sounds. When we build the E vowel, we can shift it to modify. When we build, build the U vowel, and I'm going to show you this now. So, as we're singing le, we're not going to sing hale. We're going to go hale. Right? Now, in my videos, I say we sing on the E vowel, E to eight. Like eh, eight, eight. We can also sing it eh, like lead. Le. We can translate that vowel to three different modulations or three different modifications, sorry, um, of how we can sing that word phrase. Now this is going to sound really complicated, but I really want you to get a grasp of this, and here's why. I am your lady, and you are my man, whenever you reach for me. Here I say the A vowel, we haven't learned the A vowel, but within the words themselves, we're going to go through different word phrases and different things that we can sing to um, supplement or augment or change to sing safely, to keep that open throat A vowel that we've learned, that we've supported, that is rock star solid. We can use that and just change it a little bit to relieve tension in the throat in order to be able to sing some higher phrases. So with that said, let's get started and I'll give you some ideas for some phrases. Ready? Let's go. I'd like to start with the I vowel, like lid. I is a really hard vowel sound to sing up high especially. And you get caught on it and you get the throat, you want to throw the sound to the front of the cord. Right? We don't want to do that. So I Retranslates. Let's think of this like um, a language, and we're going to retranslate a language, and we're going to take the I vowel, and we're going to make it either E or A. So instead of live, we're not going to do that. We're going to live, live, E, like le. So I becomes E instead of it. I never sing it. I hate it. <laughs> right? If I can avoid it, I'll, I'll, I'll stay away from it. So if I go live in. I don't go live in. It's le then, not even le ving. I get rid of ng, and that's a, consonants are going to be another subject for another time. But I get rid of ng. I go le then. So it we translate to it like le. All right. Next one. Within the same framework, and when we pharyngeally spread the sound, the pharynx spreads it a little bit. We want we don't want to spread too much. But we're started on it. We're going to go to a now. Le now notice, again, I don't want to shift the jaw, I don't want to change the vocal track too much, I want to keep as much consistency as I can so I can repeat the same sound, make you think I'm singing another word when I'm really not. So if I go, living, she lays there, living, lays there. Notice they're the same, live and lay. Even lay, I go, lays there, I don't do that, I go, Instead of lay, I don't do that. Why? Because it squeezes off the back of the throat. So a also is translated to e. Now you said, wait a minute, Ken. In our in the program, a translates to ah, oh, ooh, ooh, like the vowel. Well, that's true. When we're working the track and we're trying to keep the throat open and we want it to stay as open as possible, we work that mechanism to build up strength for muscle memory and open throat technique to support and sustain big open throat sounds. In practical application, when we're singing songs, those vowels themselves become modified depending on the word you sing before, the word you're singing now, and the word you're going to. Now this may sound complicated, but it really does get easy once you get a grasp of this. So in other words, the vowels of the words can change depending on the word you're coming from, the word you're on, and the word you're going to. So if I go, 
She loves me. Notice I went she eh. She la. She la. She loves me. Notice how I went eh e really quick. Me. She. She la. She la me. -i. I did it twice in it. You didn't even notice that I changed the vowels really quickly. I did it to keep the vocal tract open so I can maintain open throat. All right, let's continue. I is another word. Like, like. I don't go like, like. I just don't do that, right? So what do I do? I, like like, becomes part of the ah vowel family. So listen to me again. Hello. Mask, a little pharyngeal spread, a little mask into the sound. Like. Now it changes depending on where you are in the scale and what your vocal range is or whatever. So this isn't like, well, every time I always have to sing, uh, if I'm singing lid, lid, I go, lid, if I'm down low, lid, I have no trouble singing lid down on the bottom because it doesn't affect me that much. But as I go up the scale and I need to remodify a vowel to stay safe on the sound, the sound is actually bigger and more consistent if I can shift that vowel to another vowel, slightly modify it, and keep it open for open throat technique. All right, let's keep going. So I, in other words, I, I go like. But let's say I'm coming off uh, two words that have a ah in it. to laugh or some phrase that has a lot of at in the sound instead of me modifying the word I to aw like I go like I love to laugh I laugh laugh I love to laugh because the word before it set me up for the a vowel I can change I to a Keeping open throat, instead of singing a hard I, it's hard to sing a proper I or a proper it like that, or a proper E when you're way up top. So what we do is we modify it to make you think. I love using this example. I know I've used it before, but I love the Kelly Clarkson song, Stronger. You know? what, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Stand a little taller. Doesn't mean I will be when I'm alone. Right, it's all stronger, taller, love. changes. The pharynx doesn't change. Your vocal tract stays the same. All of the jaw shifting doesn't happen because you don't have to close down on the jaw to, to, to um, morph from one vowel sound to another. This is really important stuff now, guys, because we want to start to apply what we're learning within the scales themselves into actual vocal phrases. <laughs> the big word, love. Well, love, love, if I love, love, well, in Apagio, I've got Hello. I don't get uh, there's no uh in the sound, and there's no uh, 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 uh like hook, uh, right? So here's what we do. Love is l. Love. to uh, like look, right? We've built that into the mechanism, so from an all vowel, depending on the word we're coming from, depending on the word we're going to, I like the sentence, so I love you darling, won't you love me back? I like to take that sound and throw it to uh to make that and release it to that. And again, if I'm up really high, I probably won't do that. I would probably go back to the ah vowel because it's not that safe up high depending on where we are in our range. But so love now becomes uh, love, love, love. Uh, hook, let's go back to hook. In fact, before I get to go on hook, I want to talk about last. Ah, like last or laugh. So let's say we're stuck on ah vowels and we're going, so I laugh and I love and I need 
you notice the similarities in the vocal track? I didn't go, so I laugh, and I love, and I need, and I look. I didn't do that. Like, it's all the same feeling in the back of the throat, and I'm changing it ever so slightly. It's so subtle, the changes that I'm making, that you hardly notice them, but you wouldn't know that I'm doing this unless I point it out to you. But for good, safe singing and keeping the throat consistent, keeping the vocal track the same, all of a sudden, if you um, build up just a few of these vowels and slightly modify them, it's genius. Because then it takes away the guesswork of, can I hit that note tonight? Or can I sustain the sound? No, you've already built up this sound. You know you can sustain it, even if you have to sing another word and, and rephrase that. Which brings me into another point, which is the ooh vowel. So let's do this now. In the program, um, we've discussed a lot about it's the la, a. A goes to a, goes to u, uh, goes to oo as we ascend for vowel modifications and then remodifies the same way on the way back down. We've learned that a, a goes to a, goes to u, uh, goes to oo. Uh. Now I just said that a, though, could also share a. Eh. So a can share a eh in a vocal phrase. Though we're building up the mechanism first to get it strong, we can shift it and we can move it around. We're going to have to. We're going to have to sing words. We're going to only sing vowel sounds, right? That's why we're doing, using this for practical application. We didn't really go into ooh that much, and here's why. E is a really closed down sound, so it's really easy to identify E. If you notice, E is actually easier to sing in a scale than the ah sound, because ah is really big. We have to pare down the sound. We've got to um, shed the weight as we go up, and we have to go through this vowel modification process in order to be able to sing ah and not have it splat and get so big um, as it gets up top and, and runs away from us. But E is so small. We can kind of get through E and go, gosh, Ken, E is supposed to be a hard sound, but I can sing E in a scale much easier than ah. OK, so if you've noticed, you can sing E in your scales oftentimes, maybe all the time, easier than you can sing the ah vowel. Why is that? Well, because the E is already in a closed position. It's a smaller sound. Ah, it's a big sound. And as ah goes up top, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It pairs out, and it can get away from us if we don't pare down the sound. And it splats and gets big, so we have to pare the sound down to create these different vowel mods. Whereas E, 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 e. And we have E is a small sound, right? So in a scale, E can be easier to sing than ah can. Not in a song, and here's why. In a song, you're coming from all vowel sounds stem from the ah, it's the la, right? Which means that most of the vowel sounds we sing are open, like ah. When we come from a big sound and we have to close the sound down to an e, we have all this sound pressure closing down to get to the e. So e becomes stricter. Instant stress. So, we actually want to take the ah sound and migrate it to e et, or an, a derivation of e, not straight to e, in order to be able to translate or transition into the e vowel. Now, I know this is, sounds really complicated, guys, but it won't be after you really start to get this stuff, because it'll come to you and it, you, I mean, I'll never ask you to do things unnatural. In fact, I will never, I'll ask you to do things more natural not less natural as we're going through the process of this and you'll feel it in your throat. So E, though it may be easier to sing in a scale, is harder to sing in a song because it's a closed, it, it's closed down and coming with a lot of sound pressure coming out of it and probably going back into sound pressure as it goes in and, and, and translates to another word. So won't you leave me alone? Won't you all the morphing of the different vowel sounds that I went through just to get through the E safely, I didn't go, won't you leave me alone? Oh, it would kill me. So I quickly go from the eight or at like, like won't you leave, leave, leave me, leave me alone? Notice how I change 
my vowel sounds really quickly to keep open throat, to not have to move that vocal tract too much, and maintain open throat, and keep E consistent with my ah, or my a, or my at, or whatever vowel sound I'm coming from, currently singing now, and going to. This is key, guys. This is really golden stuff from a singer who has done this for 30 plus years, understanding how to transition. Here's the interesting thing, and I want you to test me on this. Take a listen to you, some of your favorite good technical artists, and I don't care if it's Mariah Carey or Whitney Houston or, or Pavarotti or, you know, well, I don't care who it is, right? Notice their vowel transitions, and you're going to go, oh my gosh, you're right, Kelly Clarkson. She's actually not really singing E, she's singing E. Mariah Carey, you know, uh, or uh, let's say take Celine Dion. And you lady, and you are my man. Whenever you reach for me, I'll do all that I can. You notice how it's all ah, 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 ah. There's very little transition between the vowels themselves. It's because she's mastered or understands the art of not moving that vocal tract that much, maintaining open throat ah vowels in order to be able to sing through these phrases. And then we still have our vowel modifications. So I'm not throwing out the vowel mods that we've been working on. I'm now bringing those vowel mods that we've been working on and breaking them down even farther so that we can understand how to transition into these other vowel phrases, okay? So hopefully this has been beneficial to you. I'm gonna do another one of these that are gonna be a little more complicated um, where we're gonna bring down the ooh, oh, but I wanna close with this, and that's that I never really got a chance to talk about the ooh vowel, and I wanna do this now so that you guys can practice this uh, with the guitar chords and the scales that go through on the ah vowel or another thing, any other vowel that you wanna work with or any of the scale that you want to work with with the, um, uh, your regimen that you normally deal with. So, all right, ooh gets one other vowel mod, and that's it. O, ooh, and O, and that's it. Ooh, I almost sing it like the French, ooh, 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 ooh. I'm going to O. I did that deliberately, slowed it down. Now, right here, depending on your range, I'm, you know, again, I'm a high berry, so my, my, I don't do this actually, I, I wait till later, but for all intents and purposes, so you can see what I'm doing. I start out with O on the bottom, then I go to O in the middle, and then I go back to O as a release valve. So O is a release valve in the middle. And ooh at the top is a release valve. Let me do it slowly. Ooh, there's the O. Ooh, 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 ooh. Do you mean go to O in the middle? So you hear like I go to the O in the center. Well, I do that, and again, it toggles back and forth, going up top, just like we do on our eval. So I want you guys to practice that so you get the feeling of what? The O vowel. Not even the oo vowel. The O vowel. Because really, let's do this again. I just said it's like the French O, uh, right? Position that I feel in the back of the throat that I'm singing ooh, but I'm closing my facial structure down and some of the other things down. <laughs> to give me true ooh, but I'm singing O oh in the back of my throat. Now again, guys, all this stuff is really supported and hopefully we're past that now and I don't have to talk, talk about support and all that stuff. But I want you guys to get a grasp of this because if I sing so you love me, and I knew you would, and you do. As I hit the ooh vowel up top, I didn't sing ooh. I sang O oh first. Do. And quickly modified to my ooh vowel. So you do. 
Let me do it slow. So you do to keep that throat open. Because if I did this, so you do, blah, I'm dead. I throw the sound at the front of the chord, and I'm dead. But if I do it with an O vowel and use that as a platform to get to O, so you do, I go do, U, do, U, and I get to my O vowel safely from the O position, keeping the vocal track the same from an O position. So hopefully all this was really helpful, guys. Um, you know, I've got a lot more coming your way, and I'm constantly trying to invent new ways of helping you understand this better uh, to make us all better singers. So thank you for joining me.